So, ladies and gentlemen, I will be talking to you about electricity grids and the technology behind it. Electricity grids have been around for more than 150 years now, and they have started very small, very locally. Probably the best known example in Europe of the first introduction of electricity was the use to lighten the Champs-Élysées in France, which gave to, to Paris the name of the City of Lights. Then things were spread all over Europe, the UK, the USA and all over the world. The electricity grids started locally, street by street, growing into villages and cities, and the elements that were there, like copper wires, are still available. But as grids were growing, they could tap into new energy sources that were further away from the cities. Let us assume that we want to use the hydropower in the Alps. We can only use that power in the cities nearby if we make out of that hydropower first electricity and transport that energy into the city. Not only hydropower was used as a source of electricity, but also coal, where we burn coal to produce steam to make electricity. All those energy sources were brought together in the vector electricity and brought into the city to serve the citizens and the industry. This already indicates one major element in electricity grids. Electricity grids are there to tap in to energy sources further away from the consumer and to bring the energy in a safe, reliable and environmentally friendly way to the consumer to have him use the electricity for serving his purposes. If we're going further and if we see how things have been growing over the years, we have been seeing national grids during the two world wars the period between the two world wars, and after the Second World War, we saw the European grid emerging at very high voltages, 400,000 volts in Europe. In the USA, similar things were happening. Also connecting, for instance, hydropower in Canada and tapping it and bringing it to the US, to New York. So you again you see tapping in distant energy sources and bringing it to the citizens. Will this be changing in the next years to come? The answer is yes and no. We will be tapping in distant sources. We will be tapping in local sources and we will bring that in the electrical way to the citizen. New distant sources are, for instance, natural gas and also wind power. In the past, we have seen the development of nuclear power again a source which is used distant from the city and brought into the city. But also local sources will be used. Probably the best known is photovoltaics. The photovoltaic panels on each roof of the individual citizen's house. Again, tapping into a source which is totally useless as such, but can be used to the favour of the consumer in a very versatile way, via the route of electricity. How will this technically be made possible? The overarching grid that we have seen over the last decades was based on a 400,000 volt alternating current system. This will be supplemented in the years to come with a direct current system for longer distances, for instance to wheel the wind power from the northeast of Germany to the southwest where it is consumed, or to produce electricity offshore and bring it onshore to the consumers. That will be done by DC. DC is not a new technology, but recent developments in power electronics makes it now accessible for use in high voltage grids. Again, major technology steps. We will see more and more cables being used on land, because people don't want to see the new high voltage lines and undergrounding is much more easy with DC. So you see the technology developments 
are in pace with the societal aspects of sustainability and social acceptance of new high voltage lines. Second to that is how we will be using the electricity in a market-based operation. Before everything was quite easy, we took electricity, produced it in big power plants, wheeled it and distributed it to the consumer, and it was all done in a so-called virtually integrated system, as will be explained by my colleague in other lectures. But here we are talking now about buying electricity from a large distance. Say, for instance, somebody in Poland wants to buy electricity in Spain, this should be made possible by that grid. So we will see major flows in the grid due to those new energy sources, which are distant from the consumer, but also due to the wheeling and dealing of electricity across Europe. Both will be flowing on the same grid, which will need a lot of extension, which will need an overarching design, which will need an operator that deals with that overall European grid in a coherent way and getting away from the national approaches. How this is done technically, that will be discussed in the course in a lot of detail. Again, is this all new? No, but it will be changing and will be remaining in a changing modus for the next decades to come. Uh, at the other end of the story, we have the distribution grid, the low voltage grid, the last mile. That last mile before was rather passive. Power came in from the big transmission grid and was distributed along the streets. Now we will see lo locally power being generated, for instance by photovoltaic panels. That power will be produced and will be consumed locally. But again, if there is more production locally than there is consumption, this power has to be brought to other places in Europe. So you see the interaction between distributed generation, distribution in grids, and the transmission wheeling across Europe. This will be a totally different system that's coming along. We will see a kind of internet approach where consumers are producing and using, where the individual citizen is going to interact with that system, providing services and using its services. This will be much more dynamic than ever before, and we will have what is also called demand-side participation. How will demand be controlled to match supply and demand at every instant in time? We have what is called intermittent resources like wind, like sun, and we have demand. You want to switch on your light whenever you like. You want to switch on your television set whenever you like. But several things at house, in offices, etc., can be controlled. For instance, the refrigerator. It doesn't matter whether it's switched on this half an hour or the next half hour. How can we match that? How can we match other things like the supply of the batteries of an electric vehicle? This can be connected whenever it's needed to serve you whenever you need the car. It does not have to be loaded and charged whenever you plug it in. It can be later on or made sooner or made at a higher uh, voltage level. It's up to you. But the system has to be really under control at every moment in time. You drive your electric vehicle to work. You have to charge at work to return. How can we do that? How can we make that billing transparent so there is nothing really breaking you from using electric vehicles wherever and whenever it's needed. So next point is, how can we make that all possible in a very transparent way? ICT is key there. ICT elements have to be brought into the system to handle the massive amount of data. Software will be needed to take the consumer and bring him to the system in a transparent way. The consumer does not want to have his comfort level limited. 
the consumer really wants to keep his level of comfort and go ahead with a sustainable energy supply. So sustainability and comfort level have to be maintained and when possible increased. This can be done by introducing software interfaces into the system. And those software interfaces really have to be open and interoperability is a key element there. That interoperability has to be guaranteed so different vendors can be using products in a really coherent way without having trouble of interconnections. All those elements have to be fluently working together and the software interfaces will be enabling that. However, reliability is key and reliability is such an element that we cannot afford to have any stopping of supply of electricity. People want to use electricity whenever it's needed. If we are saying that, the reliability of software elements is much lower than we are used to in the electricity system. How can we match the flexibility of software with the reliability we are used to? This is a key element in the development of grids. Will we be able to do that? Certainly we can do that. Is there a lot of R&D still needed? Beyond any doubt. But vendors are now already there to supply a lot of those materials and will be developing them in an international roadmap. Globally, we see the different elements similar. If we look at Japan these days, and if we look at the post-Fukushima era, we will see an awful lot of more demand-side management. How to reduce the peak power. If we look at Germany, we will see an awful lot of photovoltaics and wind. And even as we speak, there is several hundreds of hours per year when there is more supply than demand. So there is more generation from photovoltaics and wind than there is consumption at that moment. So at that moment, we have to increase the demand for electricity so we don't lose the input that is available for free at that moment on energy. So we have to shift demand to the moments when there is a high generation and a low residual demand in general. And we have to reduce the peak and to fill up the gaps in between. How can this be done? How can we really attract people to do that shift? The only way is called euros. Very flexible tariffs, people tapping in when there is a lot of sun, when there is a lot of wind, tapping into the energy sources at that moment because they're seeing low prices. People avoiding peak demand because the prices are high. People doing that without doing anything. The system has to be automated so it's transparent for the user, so the comfort level is not changing. People don't want to look at their electricity price meter every five seconds. So how can we do that? How can we make that as flexible <coughs> As we are seeing in the internet, it will not be an internet way of operation, but it will be the same level of transparency, the same level of interaction. Will this all be possible tomorrow? No. But it will be a transition which, if we look back in 10, 15 years, will seem to have been a revolution without a really break. How this is going to be done, I would love to explain you in detail where we see each other in October in Florence. Thank you for your attention.